viewers to another episode on ASUG 12 exams. So this episode is a continuation of section A of the August 2022 science paper 2 which is basically the standard DO level chemistry. So in the first three episodes we covered question 1 through 15. Then this episode we are going to focus on question 16 through 20. Let us look at question A16. When an excess of magnesium powder was reacted with dilute hydrochloric acid, the reaction was fast at first but gradually became slower and finally stopped. Which of the following best explains why this happened? Then, so we have A, hydrochloric acid was used up. B. Magnesium was used up. C. Magnesium particles became coated with hydrogen gas. D. Temperature of the mixture decreased. So what is key with this question is uh, this which is excess magnesium powder. So what we know is magnesium powder is in excess. Then what we know is because of this uh, magnesium cannot be used up. So B is ultimately incorrect. So let us look at uh, the equation. So what we know is uh, basically is uh, the standard equation where we are reacting uh, an acid with a metal. So once we react with an acid with a metal, what we are going to end up with is a salt and hydrogen gas. So we have magnesium solid reacted with hydrochloric acid which is uh, aqueous. Then this is going to give us basically magnesium chloride plus uh, basically hydrogen gas as in the result. So this is aqueous. So what you are going to notice in this case, um, hydrogen is a gas. So if you look at your seam, magnesium particles became coated with the hydrogen gas. This is incorrect because the gas is uh, evaporating. Then the temperature of the mixture decreased. So because the temperature decrease cannot uh, make necessary this one to stop. So D is incorrect. Hydrochloric acid was used up because the magnesium is in excess. Meaning we have more magnesium than would be required to react with him, uh, hydrochloric acid. So what is expected is hydrochloric acid would finish faster than him magnesium powder. So A would do basically be the correct answer. So what you notice in this case, the reaction will release hydrogen gas producing a salt which is magnesium chloride. Because hydrogen is a gas, it's not likely to coat with him magnesium salt because it is a gas. So C cannot be correct. Let us look at question A17. What could be the chemical formula of the nitrate of an element Q of group 3 of the periodic table? So, we know uh, the structure of uh, nitrate. The structure of nitrate is like this. We have oxygen here, then we have the double bond here, nitrogen, then we have uh, oxygen 1 here, then oxygen 1. So, this is a positive, then this is a negative, then this is a negative. So, so what is happening in this case, uh, we have the positive plus negative, we are going to end up with a zero here charge, then we remain with this charge. So one negative charge meaning a nitrate as a valence of a basically one. So one, so because this is group three element, Q is going to have a valence of a uh, 3 is willing to lose 3 e electrons so that it remain with a complete outer shell. So to find the formula what you do in this case now we just close at the valence so what we end up with is Q because this is the one we ignore it then it will be N the nitrate then this valence comes here so this is the formula. So what you notice if you look at the options you see that uh, D is the correct answer. Let us look at question A18. Some metals are roasted in 
here before they are reduced in the blast furnace. What is the main air pollution caused by this process? So basically what is key here is we are losting. So two metals are losted when uh, you are extracting them from their ores. One of them is basically a zinc from zinc blend. Then we also have um, copper from a charcoal pilot. So these two, just to demonstrate what is happening, I'm going to uh, quickly light these two equations so that you have better understanding. So zinc is uh, extra extracted from zinc blend, which is this one, by losting it in the hair, which is oxygen. Then we are going to get uh, basically the zinc oxide plus sulfur dioxide, which is a gas. So what you notice in this case, this is combined with oxygen to give us this oxide. When you balance the equation, we are going to introduce this number so it will be a balanced as quick as possible. So this is the first case. The second case is when to get copper uh, sulfide from a charcoal pilot. So charcoal pilot, like this. So it starts with a copper F this. This is a solid. Then we react it with our oxygen. We are going to get basically a copper sulfide. Then plus iron sulfide. Solid, solid. Then plus sulfur dioxide. So what you notice in this case is we have this sulfur and sulfur produced. So sulfur dioxide would react with a rain water to form a sulfurous acid which is a pollutant and it inhibits the growth of plants. So we go back to the options. We notice that we have a carbon dioxide is produced. It's not collect. There's no carbon dioxide produced. We have carbon monoxide is produced. It's incorrect. We see C, lead fumes are produced in collect. D, sulfur dioxide is produced. So D is the collect answer. Let us look at question A, 19. The following structures represent different types of soap. Which statement about soap is collect? Soap is. So what we notice in this case, in all these types of soaps we have basically this component then we have this component then we have this component and all these components are the same that's the first thing so how can we form uh, this soap we notice in this case uh, this is uh, the carboxylic part from uh, this double bond then we have this side we have this so it's uh, this one which is hydrogen being replaced by sodium to give us a soap so what is happening in this case is basically what we have this is combining with another hydroxide to form water so that this H and D combine. So ideally, this is coming from sodium hydroxide. So the standard equation which is happening in this case could be, for example, we can get a one acid, say ethanoic acid. We react it with a basically a base or alkali or metal. We are going to end up with a basically salt plus water. That is what is happening in this case. For example, we have seen H3. This is the ethanoic acid, which is in the aqua state. We react it with a sodium hydroxide, which is in aqua state. Then uh, what is going to happen is it no more neutralization process is going to happen. So we're going to have uh, ethanoic acid. We are replacing this H with uh, the sodium, which is this one. So this sodium takes up this one. Then this hydrogen comes here to form water. So we are going to have this uh, compound. 
then plus water. So this one becomes a salt. So ideally the soap is a salt, which is D. So a soap is not a base in this case because it has this compound. Then uh, it's not an ester because it's an ester we are reacting on alcohol and a carboxylic acid. So it's not B. Then it's not a polymer, of course, because these are not uh, an addition of monomers. Let us look at question A20. What would be the structure of the polymer formed when the following monomers undergo polymerization? So basically, the question is asking us to basically find the structure or identify the structure that can be formed from uh, these two uh, monomers. So let us call this uh, A, then this B. So if you look at A, A is basically a dicarboxylic acid, which is basically a carboxylic acid containing uh, two this carboxylic group, this one. So what are these two? So we have this and this. That's why this is known as uh, basically the dicarbon silic acid. Okay. Then uh, if you look at uh, B, B is a dio, which is basically an alcohol containing two hydroxyl group, which is this one and this one. So that's why it's called D dio. Di means two. So if that's the case, what is going to happen is when these two they react, they are going to form a, a compound. So what is going to happen in this case is this one, one of these is going to lose this hydroxyl, then this one is going to lose this uh, hydrogen to form one water. Then this one is going to lose this one. Then this one is going to lose one H to form also another water, which is the second unity of water or the second molecule. Then what is going to remain is basically we are going to have this bond C, the bond then C, which is this one, then oxygen here, which is a double bond, then uh, this unit. Then this side we are going to have another C, then double bond, then this um, open uh, chain. Then this one is going to have now combined with oxygen, which is the one which is remaining this one. Then uh, this unit, then another one which is this one. So this is going to be uh, the single unity of a monomer. So a monomer after polymerization is going to form this uh, repeating unit. So it will be like this. So if you look at um, the options, you discover that uh, basically uh, A is incorrect because we don't have this among this and we don't have uh, uh, nitrogen. Then B is uh, in in collect, we don't have nitrogen in here. Between a C and D, these two they look similar, except that uh, this one has got this, which is none of we've seen these. These are open, so this is uh, the collecting answer, which is exactly what we've done. So D is the collecting answer. So basically, this is how you answer these questions to get the 20 marks. So please. Uh, join me as I start uh, looking at section B in the next episode. If you like uh, these videos, uh, please like, share and comment on uh, ways that you feel like we can improve our videos and add more content according to uh, the topics that you are finding to be challenging.